A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Fun one, from the Harvard MIT Maths Tournament of 2018. Compute the smallest n element of natural numbers, where natural numbers means positive integers without zero, where we have an addition of nested radicals. They are conjugates to one another, and we want to find the n, where all of this, the summation, is element of the integers. It's a really fun one. It's a very nice denesting radicals exercise, and I hope you are going to enjoy what you are going to see today. By the way, if you're interested in more contest math and the like, why not make sure to check out the content of today's sponsor, Brilliant. More information at the end of the video, but in case you're not ready yet, check out the courses. They are amazing, and now we are going to dive right in. So the first thing that comes to my mind when I see a nested radical, or how I like to call it, rested radical, is um, I just like to put it as some variable p, for example, because we want it to be out of the positive or negative integers. Okay, that's far that's good. And how can you get rid of square roots? Well, by squaring both sides, let's see how far this is going to get us. If we were to square both sides, we are going to get that p squared, so pp, you could say, huge pp is, okay, this is just a binomial formula. So we are going to square this part, meaning we are going to get 100 plus the square root of n. Then we are going to add the square of this part, so plus 100 minus square root of n. And now we are going to get plus two times those multiplied together. So two times the square root of a times the square root of b. If both of those in here are positive, or at least one actually, then we can turn the square root of a times the square root of b into the square root of a times b. Meaning we are going to get the square root of 100 plus square root of n times 100 minus the square root of n. Okay, that's far as good. Now we have a plus b times a minus b. This is just a binomial theorem once again, the third one, difference of two squares. Meaning that's the first part squared, so 100 squared, minus the second part squared, so n. And this is what we got right now. Let us bring some stuff together. I mean the square root of n here is going to cancel out. Then we got 100 plus 100 is 200. Then we got 2 times the square root of something, meaning we can factor out the 2 as a common factor, meaning p squared at this time is nothing other than 2 times 100 plus the square root of 100 squared minus n. Now, at this point, I got a bit stuck initially because I thought, well, how can you proceed from here? That's, that's a bit abstract. We got two variables in here. I tried to do some casework and the like, but it didn't lead anywhere. And then I fought back to something that is a common practice when dealing with denesting radicals. And this actually led to a very nice argument, what the smallest n is going to be. And I think that's a very elegant solution. Let me know down there in the comments. Now, the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to use a little ansatz here, you could say. I'm going to leave this here and we're going to go back to the original thing. And what we're going to say is we're going to let the square root of 100 plus the square root of n be equal to the square root of a plus the square root of b, where a and b are both positive integers. This is just an ansatz that we are using. We are supposing here that we can write the nested square root as the addition of two square roots. That's actually something from very abstract algebra. This is one you, uh, when you basically um, adjungieren um, I don't know what is in, in English right now, but if you basically bring an irrational part to some kind of number, so a plus d times the square root of c, this is what you do with basically complex numbers too. This is like the predecessor of complex numbers, you could say in abstract algebra. Now, what we're going to do here with this ansatz is we're going to square both sides, once again getting rid of the square roots in the process. If we square both sides, we're going to get rid of the square root here, giving us 100 plus square root of n is equal to. Now, this right here is just a binomial formula. Once again, we're going to square it, meaning we're going to get the square of the square root of a, it's just a, plus, similarly, the square of the square root of b is just b. And then we are going to get two times the square root of a times b. This is what we discussed earlier. Okay, now the cool thing about this construction right here is that we can actually compare the rational and the irrational parts. 
Now the rational parts here are that 100 must be equal to a plus b. 100 is equal to a plus b. It's like solving a system of equation and basically comparing coefficients. And the ir irrational part here is that the square root of n must be equal to 2 times the square root of a times b. So square root of n must be equal to 2 times the square root of a times b. Or 2 is nothing other than the square root of 4. Meaning this overall is going to be just the square root of 4 times a b. Now we can solve a bit further here because um, one thing we can see up here is that if we solve this for b, we are going to get that b is equal to subtracting a on both sides, 100 minus a. And also the square root, if we have just positive arguments, is a strictly increasing function. Meaning what we can do is we can compare spots. If we have the square root of a being equal to the square root of b, we can basically square both sides to get a is equal to b. Squaring both si sides here or just using the argument that it's a strictly increasing function, we're also going to get the relationship that n is equal to 4 times a b or since we know what b is, we know that n is hence equal to 4 times a times 100 minus a. Or if we write ev everything out, this is important in a minute, we are going to get um, that this is 400 a minus 4 a squared. Now actually you might notice something here. n must be element of the positive integers, so natural numbers without zero. When is this the case? This is only the case if a is strictly less than 100. If it were 100, then n would be equal to 0. This can't be due to our restrictions from the start. And if it's greater than 100, well, shit, then we get a negative number. This is not possible. Meaning what we also get is that a must be less than 100. That's also important in a minute. Now we know what n is and we also know what our solution is going to be. Namely our solution is going to be p squared is equal to 2 times blah 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 minus n. Why not plug our new n into here and we are going to see what we are going to get. Meaning if we were to plug this into here we are going to get that p squared, the pp is equal to 2 times 100 plus the square root of 100 squared minus n. Minus n. Okay, let us plug the definition for n in. So we are going to get minus 400a and then we are going to get minus and minus is positive, so plus 4a squared. And everything is going to unfold very nicely. This is why I said my solution is pretty elegant, <laughs> if I may say so myself. Now, you might notice something here. So 4a squared is the same as 2 times a, but the whole thing squared. So this part right here is 2a, but squared. Now what about 400a? Hmm, 400a. I mean we get a 2a in here most definitely. It's something times 2a. What else do we have? Well, to get to a 4 we need another 2. So 2 times and now we just need the 100's place. 2 times 100 times 2a. Hey, <laughs> this is just a binomial theorem. A, squ uh, a minus b squared, basically you could say, where our a and b are respectively 2a and 100, meaning our p squared is respectively the same as 2 times 100 and then we are going to get plus the square root of, and now we are going to get 100 minus 2a squared. And if we take the square root of something squared, it's going to give us just a thing in of itself. No the absolute value. Please be careful here. Meaning what we get is at the moment that p squared is equal to 2 times 100 plus the absolute value of 100 minus 2a. And if we are dealing with absolute values we obviously need to go through some casework here. Now let us take a look at the first case. What about if our argument is going to go to zero? Case one. Our argument goes to zero if a is exactly 50, then we get 100 minus 100. So for a being exactly equal to 50, identically equal, we are going to get that p squared is equal to, this is zero, 2 times 100 is 200. And 200 certainly is not a perfect square obviously, so this right here doesn't work out. Now what about a different case? What about for example, what if a were equal to, or not equal to, we got rid of that case. What if it were for example 
greater than 50. If a is greater than 50, then we get, for example, 100 minus 110. This is negative 10. Absolute value of negative 10 is 10, meaning we need to turn around the order here, meaning our absolute value is going to turn into p squared is equal to two times 100. And now we are going to turn those around, getting rid of the absolute value in the process, namely um, plus 2a minus 100. OK, 100 and 100 is going to cancel out giving us just 4a. So p squared is consequently just 4a. And if we take the square root of that, we are going to get that p must be equal to 2 times the square root of a. Okay, that is actually something we can work with. p must be equal to 2 times the square root of a. But how can we decide what a is? I mean, a is certainly bounded. It must be less than 100. Also, p is an integer in some kind of way, meaning a must be a perfect square. So 100 doesn't work, that's a perfect square. But where should we start? Should, should we start from 0, for example? Or should we start from 99 and backwards? Well, let us take a look at the relationship between our n. We are looking for the smallest n possible and our a. We got a parabolic relationship here, actually, meaning the bigger our a is, the smaller our n is going to get. Just take a look at that. If a where, for example, what's the next perfect square less than 100? That would be 81, 9 times 9. Then, obviously, 4 times 81 squared is going to overtake our 400 times 81. Meaning, since it's parabolic, our n is going to be smallest if a is, for example, 81. And this is indeed the case. This is the smallest a that we can, or the biggest a that we can find, such that our n gets minimized. So, that means, a must be equal to 81 or in other words our p at the very end is going to be um, let me see for a second yeah our um, p at the very end is going to be 2 times 9 meaning it's going to be 18 in the process p is going to be equal to 18 this is the solution to the summation but the thing is what you want to find out is what our smallest n is going to be meaning if we were to plug this in then we are going to get by this relationship up here that n must be equal to so 4 times 81 times 100 minus 81 is going to be 19 let us calculate this real quick so 4 times 81 this is 320 324 and this times 19 um, and then we get 19 is nearly 20 so we are going to get um, 20 times 324 which is 6480 but we need to subtract 324 from it and meaning this is going to give us in the process 6100 56. This right here is our <laughs> smallest n and it's pretty fucking big if you ask me. But we are not done yet. We still have a different case to go. Namely, we are only dealt with the cases where either a is equal to 50 or a is greater than 50. What about the last case? a is less than 50. If you were to plug this in, it would obviously work out. You could find some kind of n satisfying our equation down here, such that it's an integer in some kind of way. But the thing is, this right here wouldn't give us the smallest n by the aforementioned arguments. n is only smallest if a is biggest, because we got a polynomial of degree 2 relationship here. And yeah, this concludes it. And I think this was a very fun problem. And I think this was also a very elegant solution. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, if you're in for more contest mathematics and square root and all this crazy stuff, then why not make sure to check out the contents of today's sponsor Brain, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Man, why is denesting square root so much fun? I can't get enough of this seriously. I could post so many videos on end about just this topic because it's just so much fun. And the greatest thing about things like this, this overall is just a Diophantine equation, even though it's, it's a non-linear one. You can visualize things like this. You can graph the, the addition of those square roots, those nested square roots, and see if you can find any integer points and hence find solutions to this equation right here graphically. And Brilliant is actually the best source for you to learn something on the go or at home graphically highly visualized in a very intuitive manner. 
Brain is an online learning platform and app with nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer scientists, chemistry. No matter what it is you're striving for to learn in the STEM field, Brain definitely got something up the sleeve for you. And as mentioned before, everything is highly visualized. They want you to use your hands, not only your brains, but also your hands to play around with graphics, graphs, vary the parameters of, for example, the arguments inside of a square root function to find out more about the function in and of itself. And the list goes on and on. Statistics, visualized, geometry, visualized, Everything is visualized over there. I didn't even know that you could visualize some of the things that they do over on their, on their platform, but they, but they just do it and it's amazing. And the best way to just experience brilliant and just to find out how amazing it is in and of itself is to experience it on your own by using the link at the top of the description, brain.org slash rambleness. With it, you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brain already, which is great in and of itself, but more importantly, and way cooler than that, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a freaking great deal considering how much content they already have available on their website and how much content they are adding on a regular basis. I seriously can't stop talking good things about Brilliant. They are consisting of a very great team with experts in their fields creating those courses and many great artists creating the visuals for their website. There's a lot of love in those courses and you are going to notice it. Once you are in those courses you are going to notice how much thought they just put into everything they do on the website and just how well it's thought out and, and everything. I just like it and you should also try it out and like it too, because it's something that you should most definitely like. It's like an axiom. It's the axiom of liking Brilliant because they are doing a freaking great job. So yeah, check it out and support the channel this way. And other than that, don't forget to check out me working my wood over on Flemmy's wood. And up until next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. See ya.